fire, Dada's there. Tongues of flaming, fire. He rested upon every individual who gathered on that upper room, awaiting that promised gift, the guaranteed deposit, the Holy Spirit upon their lives. The reason why I explained these three festivals, it's going to make a lot of sense during this sermon. Jesus Christ is the Passover. Somebody say aloud, amen. amen. Hence, that's the reason why we don't celebrate Monday, Thursday. Does that make sense? We remember only Good Friday because it is the day that is actually good for Christians, the day that Jesus died for us. Say aloud, amen. amen. Because the Passover lamp is not the unleavened bread or the herbs that has no sweet or salt in it. Does that make sense? Bitter herbs? No, we are talking about Jesus Christ. Say aloud, amen. Amen. Once he died, that's the thing is changed. The regulations itself is changed. So that's why we're talking about the festival of weeks. We're talking about the 40 days that Jesus was there with the children of Israel, especially with the apostles after he rose again. That is Acts chapter 1 verse 3. He was there with them 40 days. From time to time he appeared to them to let them know that he came back to life. Somebody say a louder amen. Now, pastor, that is fine. Then what is the connection between book of Acts and Exodus chapter 6? A lot of connections. Please do understand this. Exodus chapter 6 to 20 plays an important role in the day of Pentecost. In the day of what? Mm. Do you have your Bibles? Let's flip to Exodus chapter 6. Thank you, Father. If you're there, say a louder amen. God said to Moses, I am the Lord, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob as God Almighty, which means El Shaddai. Say a louder amen. God Almighty, right? But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself fully known to them. The original translation there represents the word Yahweh. Say aloud, Amen. The great I am. He did not introduce himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the great I am, but only to Moses. Because Moses asked the Lord, what am I supposed to say to Pharaoh? He says, the great I am has sent you. Say aloud, Amen. Who is the great I am? Elohim, the creator. Who is the great I am? Yahweh, the one true living God. Somebody say a louder. Before that, it was the God Almighty, but now he's saying, I am Yahweh. Please understand, because this word will make sense when the Lord gave ten commandments. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 and 4 highlights on this. You shall have no other God but me. Who's that? Yahweh. Somebody say aloud, amen. amen. Does that make sense? Let's read further. The Bible said, I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they resided as foreigners. What does that mean? God already took Abraham and his descendants to live in Canaan, but later on, because of the sin, they had to be taken into Egypt as slaves. Open your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Come on, don't look at me. Chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that 400 years... Your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they shall be enslaved, and they shall be mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace, and you will be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation of your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached to its full measure. Let me give you a little bit of history. We've been studying about the history at the Capstone Discipleship Training School, right? The new earth was created with eight people. Noah, Noah's wife, 
And Noah has three sons and three daughter-in-law, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? Abraham was in the descendant line of Shem. So which already means that he was already included in the new covenant. If you want to read, you read the 10th chapter of the book of Genesis, which talks about the table of the nations, and straight away it goes to Abraham. On the 12th chapter of the book of Genesis, God calls Abraham to leave his father's land, leave his mother's land, his familiarity to go to a land where God has called him. And the Lord said, I will make you into a great nation. I will turn you into a great blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. The Lord appeared to him in the fourth verse. The Lord then again appeared to him in the seventh verse of Genesis 12 through a vision. And he then therefore built an altar to the Lord with the people that he brought out. So that that began the church service number one in the Old Testament. Somebody say it louder. We're talking about Noah built an altar in the new covenant, right? After the deluge of the old earth, and he built an altar. That's the first altar. And the second altar was this, because God is making people into a people group, whereby they will, turn, they will be turned into a nation for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say a louder amen. Please understand, Abraham had a son to begin with. Son out of something that was not in the will of God. Hagar, the Egyptian maid. I want you to underline that word. Hagar, what? The Egyptian maid. Later on, the children of Israel will go to Egypt as what? Slaves. Please understand this. The slave trade began with a sin. Wow, the children are excited. <laughs> I wish we could get excited like them. Eh? Say a louder. All right, let's have a competition. Say a louder. Ah, not bad. All right. See now, what has happened? The Lord already told him in the 15th chapter, because Moses was the one who wrote the book of Genesis, because he understood in such a manner that you need to make sense of things as to what has happened in a coherent manner. Does that make sense? All right. So what has happened now? God blessed Ishmael. Ishmael also had 12 tribal leaders. There's a confusion between Islam and Christianity because Islam people believe it was Ishmael, the chosen one. We Christians believe Isaac to be the chosen one. Already Ishmael had 12 tribe leaders. So did Jacob, right? Whose name turned into Israel later on. The 12 tribes of Israel began with Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Say aloud, amen. So those 12 tribes of Israel are the people who went into a place called Goshen in Egypt, where Joseph was sold as a slave earlier on by his own brothers, to the Ishmaelites, I want you to read the scripture very clearly. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 40 to 42, it makes a lot of sense. Begin with 37, beginning of the story of Joseph. They sold him as a slave to the Ishmaelite traders who then sold him to Potiphar's house. Does that make sense? The slavery began with Ishmaelites. Oh, may the Lord deliver us. Come on, somebody. Does that make sense? That's why when you read the Bible, read it in context. Because this is the context of the day of Pentecost. Somebody say a loud amen. Now please understand, the Lord delivered them, right? He took them there because Isaac asked, sorry, Joseph asked his brothers, Is my father still living? If he's still alive, go and tell him, do not delay, come to me. So 70 of them all went into Goshen and settled there in the land of Egypt. And then as God promised Abraham, your descendants as will be as numerous as stars in the sky and sands on the ocean. Somebody say aloud, amen. Therefore, they multiplied. They filled the earth. The Pharaoh did not understand what was happening. How much ever I enslaved them. These people seem to grow. They seem to multiply. I am actually 
actually afraid as to what they will do to us later on. They could come and attack us. What should we do? We shall enslave them. These guys are skillful in their hands. What should we do? We will make them build cities for us. Yes or no, sir? If you read the Bible, that's how the Bible says the Israelites who worked as slaves, they built cities. You know why? Because Cain was a skillful builder. He built a city for his son in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Say it louder. Please understand, God's favor is upon the people who he chose to call my firstborn. Yes or no, sir? My firstborn. Oh, glorious one. He said, the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here. Exactly 400 years later, the Lord heard the cry, not that he wasn't hearing, but it was already spoken in the sovereign will and plan that at that particular time he will hear the prayers and the outcry of his people against Egypt and he will raise for himself a leader named Moses which means someone who was drawn out of water raised in a palace of Egypt and learned all the skills and all the knowledge that one could acquire in that day. Therefore, that I can raise him up to be a leader to bring my people out of enslavery. Am I making sense? But Moses had issues on his own. He did not know what identity he should pursue. He was broken between two identities, one as a prince in the house of Pharaoh, another one as a Hebrew boy. Yes or no, sir? Because his sister brought him back to home so that his mother could nurse him. At the right time, she will give him back to the palace where he will be the prince that God wanted him. Can I tell you, God never makes mistakes. God is not a small person to deal with small people. Please understand this. Not that God would not, but you need to learn to follow the will of God for your life. Somebody say aloud, amen. If you are taking you to the palace, God had a plan to deliver you. Listen to this. You have been taken to the place where you're going to be delivered is because someone was lifted from prison to the palace. Therefore, from the palace going to come the deliverance. Yes or no, sir? Do you don't know the story of Joseph? Yes? From prison? Slave, prison, to the palace. From palace, he brought a verdict that his family will be brought. He went and spoke to Pharaoh, give them the land of caution. So the Lord had in mind, please read with me very carefully and learn to read between the lines as well. From the palace, God wanted deliverance. Therefore, he raised Moses there. Yes or no, sir? Therefore, he raised Moses there. But Moses, in his limited understanding, he was premature in decision-making. Let me use that word very carefully. He went and killed a Hebrew man. And therefore, by the guilt of killing the Hebrew man, he ran away for his life and became a shepherd boy. Crazy, huh? Listen to this. The trade of Israelites... Basically, they're shepherding people. It breaks my heart. Whew. If you study the history, the Egyptian people, they never eat meat. Those days. What you now call Brahmins. The plagues, one of the plagues, Gomata. What do they make? Golden calf. What did Aaron say? This is, these are the gods that brought you out of? There's a lot of historical connections. I'm telling you with the religious, when you study the world religion, it makes a lot of sense. Let me explain this in all sincerity. Please listen to me very carefully. When God has kept you in a place, don't dethrone yourself because of your immaturity. Come on. Because of your immaturity. Because of your immaturity. Immaturity. He ran for life. He married the daughter of a Midianite priest. Right? 
whose name was Zipporah. He had two sons. First born was called Gershom. Second was called Eliezer. Correct, no? Zipporah decided, this is not working out for me. You're going back to Egypt. I am going to stay with my father, Jethro. She was not with her husband when the Lord was delivering the nation of Israel out of the enslavement of Pharaoh. Ah, read the Bible very carefully. Jethro visited him after they came out of Egypt, after hearing what the Lord has done through Moses. Everybody wants to partake in your glory. Nobody wants to go through the pain and process with you. Yes or no, sir? Yes or no, sir? Yeah. Please know that those people are not supposed to be in your life. Come on, somebody, please say it louder. Say it louder. So what has happened? Let me, let, me, let me fast forward. So the Lord did bring them out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 6. Verse 6, 5. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Somebody please underline that word in your Bible. God is the God who remembers his covenant. Somebody say aloud, amen. I remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians, I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. Listen to this. This is the first covenant God is entering after he delivered them. Seventh verse, underline that. He said, I will take you as my own what? People. And I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land I swore with an uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a possession for I am the Lord. Somebody say it louder. For I am the what? The Lord. Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to them. Leave the word. Because of their discouragement and harsh labor. Some of you are too busy for the Lord. Am I making sense here this morning? Some of you are what? Too busy. I have to go through this. I have to put an extra hour. Yes. But nothing should replace God in your life. Somebody say a louder. Please say a louder. Amen. Nothing should what? replace God. Moses told them, God wanted to make a covenant with you. I am remembering the covenant I made with Abraham. Listen to me now. I'm going to call you my own people. I want to be your God. But they said, no, 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 no. We're not wanting to listen because of the discouragement we have seen and the harsh labor. Before God could give them ten commandments, he expected obedience. He expected what? Before the Holy Spirit could come on the day of Pentecost, God expected obedience from the apostles. Yes or no, sir? He said, stay here in Jerusalem. Stay here in what? What does that mean? Obedience. What does that mean? Obedience. Fast forward. Mm. Let's go to Exodus. Saraboshiteli mm. karam. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Exodus chapter 19. Oh, I'm going to draw a parallel understanding between what happened in Mount Sinai to what happened in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai. The Israelites camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourself have seen, the fourth verse always blesses my heart. If you can underline it, please underline it. He said, what I did to Egypt and how I carried you 
on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Brought you to who? Brought you to Canaan? Land flowing with milk and honey? How brought them unto himself? If you are accepting the Lord, believing that God will give you a house, car and a job, it is wrong. You need to come to your creator because he's the one who created you. Come on. I didn't hear people say, say louder, amen. Does that make sense? He brought them out unto himself. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you obey me, this is also before the Ten Commandments. If you obey me fully and keep my covenant, what is that? What covenant? Sixth chapter, correct? No. Keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be treasured as my own possession, although the whole earth is mine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Sixth verse, can you please underline? You will be for me a kingdom of what? Shilahara Boshete. Kingdom of what? Priest under what? If you thought the scripture only comes in 1 Peter 2, 9, you are wrong. This has already occurred. The Mount Sinai, isn't it? You will be a kingdom of royal priests. A holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Moses went back and summoned the elders and the people said before them all words the Lord commanded him to speak. Then all the people responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud. Listen to this. So that the people will hear me speaking with you, will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said, go to the people and tell them to consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes. Be ready by the third day. Because on the day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all people. What happened in the day of Pentecost? Everybody were watching what was happening. Correct? No? Yes or no, sir? In the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful and do not approach the mountain or touch the Whoever touches the mountain, it is to be put to death. They are to be stoned or shot with arrows. Not in the hand is to be laid on them. No animal or no person or animal shall be permitted to live. Only when the ram's on sounds a long blast, may they approach the mountain. Stop there. Are you ready? Shekala rabo shita raba. Seventeenth verse. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. What were the apostles doing in the upper room? Meeting with God. Bible says they were in constant prayer. They were in what? Constant prayer. Can I tell you? Pentecost is not an event that you will remember once a year but it's an experience that you live every day with. Come on, somebody say it louder. Pentecost is a what? Experience, not an event. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it with fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from the furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently. What happened on the day of Pentecost? A rushing wind, correct? No, I saw the whole earth was shaking. Listen to the word. Oh, so Moses went up as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended to the top of the Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. He went up and the Lord said to him, Go down and warn the people, so do not force their way to see the Lord, and many of them will perish. Even priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us. Put limits around the mountains and set it apart as holy. 
The Lord replied, Go down and bring Aaron up with you, but the priest and the people must not force their way to come up to the Lord. He will break out. Moses went down to the people and told them, 20th verse, chapter, and God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. It blesses my heart every time I read this. He's not an almighty God that he spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's saying, I am the great I am. Say aloud, Amen. I am Yahweh. 20th chapter, 18th verse. When the people saw the thunder and the lightning, heard the trumpet, and saw the mountain in spoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, oh, this blesses my heart. Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of the Lord will be with you and keep you from sinning. Come on, somebody, please underline the word. The fear of the Lord is not for you to receive wrath, but it is to make you go away from sinning. Say a louder, amen. It is to keep you from sinning. Somebody say a louder. So let's stop here. Let's go to the second chapter of Acts 3. Jude. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. Can we sing? Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come on, sing it out. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your prayer. Fill us with your power, live inside of me, show the living water, never try. chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers in those days Peter stood up among the believers a group numbering up to a hundred and twenty Group numbering up to how many people? 120. Peter did not speak only on the day of Pentecost. Peter spoke even before that. Somebody say a louder. When the day of Pentecost, second chapter, first verse. Oh, Rashi, Televa. They were all gathered together 
in one place. The Lord called the Israelites to come to meet with God in the book of Exodus chapter 19. Yes or no, sir? Now, God has chosen few people to come together in one accordness to meet with him. Suddenly, a sound like blowing of a violent wind. In the Old Testament, it was a ram's horn, a loud noise of a trumpet. Correct, no? Now, a violent sound blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. It was not the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. Bible very clearly. What does the Bible say? Fill the whole house where they were sitting. First, it fills the place. Then it fills the people. Come on, somebody. Yes or no, sir? That's why the glory of the Lord fills the temple of God first. Say aloud, amen. And then the people whom the Lord has chosen will receive his glory. Say aloud. Yes or no, sir? First, it filled the place where they were seated. Sanctification will happen this morning. Rather this afternoon. In this sanctuary in Jesus name. Come on somebody. Even before you could walk in. The presence of God was here. Do you believe it? Ooh. I'm telling you. Even before I could open a scripture to read. His presence was already here. Heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Fill this place, oh God. Fill this place. Fill this place. Fill this place. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Nobody can speak in tongues unless the Spirit enables you. Does that make sense? I'm tired of pastors in this country will tell you to repeat after them how they speak in tongues. You also receive. That is not, that is rubbish. That is what? Rubbish. As the Spirit enabled them, each of them spoke in other tongues. Day of Pentecost is not an event. It is a day of Spirit's enablement. Come on, somebody. They are what? Spirit's enablement. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. And this still 13th verse, I'm telling you, it is powerful. God fearing Jews from every nation. Underline that word, God fearing, which means people from Kerala also went. Yes or no, sir? People from Mumbai also went because there are Jewish synagogues even to this day. Yes or no, sir? Yes or no, sir? I'm telling you, Thomas came to minister to the Jewish settlement in Kerala. Yes, that's the truth. That's the history. He didn't just randomly land up here in this country. He said, I'm going to reach my people there. They need the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the word. God-fearing Jews from all over every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed. Can I tell you that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will amaze you. Say aloud, Amen. You will not be speaking. It will be God who is speaking through you. Say aloud, Amen. You will not be under control. Holy Spirit will control you. Somebody say aloud. The Bible says they were utterly amazed and they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And then how is that each of us hear them in our native language? Please, I don't know if they could underline all of it, but you can please do Parthians. Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, exactly from where God picked Abraham. Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. I like the word Asia. 
because they have a lot of countries to mention, a lot of nations. Let me just put that one continent, Asia. Oh, it is said to believe in the linguistic world there are about 6,000 plus languages in the world. How many languages? 6,000 and a majority of the languages are already spoken only in India. Do you know that? Do you know that? Majority of those language people group are in, in this country, what we proudly called India. Yes or no, sir? Go to the Northeast. Every village speaks a different dialect. Yes or no, sir? Go to Oriya. They speak Oriya, but their language is called Desi, na? Desiya. It's called Desiya. That's not Oriya. That's completely different. Crazy, no? You go to Nagaland, they speak Nagamese, but when they go home, they speak Ao. Correct, no? They speak Lota. They speak Angami. They speak Zomi. They speak Paite. They speak Waipe. I don't know. I lose track of it when I come to understand how many languages that are there in this country. Said an Asia. So which means the tongues are actually known languages. It's just that you don't know them yet. Yes, say aloud, amen. Tongues are that what? Known languages, but you don't know. When I went to Africa, they said gorongo, gorongo. They repeat words. When they repeat words, it has different meaning. When they say that word once, it has different meaning. I said... What? Crazy, no? That's how languages are formed. Oh, thank you, Lord. So tongues are known languages. It's just that you don't know them yet. Say a louder amen. Say a louder amen. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Look at this. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And what? Bless my Arab brothers in Jesus name. People could hear somebody speak in Arabic also. Say her louder. Say her louder. Amen. You know that's how God ministered to Muslim world. He appears to them in vision and he speaks to them. Because God put this as part of the languages on the day of Pentecost when it happened. My Arab brothers, you are also remembered. Say aloud, Amen. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. What were they wondering? How are they glorifying God in our own language when they don't even know a syllable in our language? When God takes over you, it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about Him. Come on, somebody say aloud, Amen. It's going to be about Him and nothing about you at all. Say aloud, Oh, glorious. Oh, I am enjoying this. Amazed and perplexed. That's a human being. That's the human nature. One part of me is excited. The other part of me is what? A lot of people in church, they don't speak in tongues because they're perplexed. At the same time, they want to speak. What will people standing next to me will think? Oh, who cares? You want to scream hallelujah, shout hallelujah, say aloud amen. You want to burst out into speaking in tongues, so be it. May the Lord take control over your tongue. Somebody say aloud. That's why I love, I like African church. They're not bothered. They will stand up. They will like, ah, you understand? Christians have lost the art because we've been so politically civilized in such a manner that only the person in the front will speak. You cannot speak. Lord, deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody, please say louder, Amen. What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. When you do not know, it is better for you and me not to speak about what we do not know. That's why the Bible says, any sin can be forgiven except what was spoken against the Holy Spirit. Yes or no, sir? What you do not know, don't speak about it. Hmm. Then Peter stood up. You all know the story, right? And then he quoted Book of Joel in the last days. I have underlined as a, as a student of God's word, I still have a question. I will get to heaven and ask the Lord. He said in the last days, 2,000 years have gone by. Are we still in last days? He was quoting the book of Joel. That is hundreds and hundreds of years before this. And even he said in the last days. 
What does last days mean? What does that term mean in the last days? We say in school, this is the last day of the school year. It, it means a season. It means a what? Don't think that the trumpet sound is going to come now. God's going to come. Does people need to be, you know, evangelized? People need the Lord Jesus Christ as much you and I do. Yes or no, sir? Say aloud, amen. The whole world needs to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are comfortably sitting here. There are people out there who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Who will go? Paul says, how will they hear unless someone is sent to them? Yes or no, sir? In the last days, what was the last days? 2,000 years ago when day, the day of Pentecost happened? He was just quoting as per the leading of the Holy Spirit what prophet Joel wrote about, about a season that was about to come upon them. Come on, somebody say aloud, amen. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is not the second Adam, but he was the last Adam. Come on, somebody say aloud. Yes or no, sir? The season was ending there and something new of the Holy Spirit was coming because he said, I'm going to the Father. Therefore, I will send you the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. A season was ending, a new season was beginning. Come on, say it louder. Just like the way a season of enslavement got ended, a new season came upon the nation of Israel. Yes or no, sir? Somebody sponsor lunch for me today. Just kidding. Oh, I'm telling you. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. You know why the Lord said that? Why he prophesied? It was only given to the apostles. If you read the book of Luke, God said receive the Holy Spirit in the end. Correct, no? Yes or no, sir? Yes or no? It was only for the apostles and the people who believe. Now God says, let me open this up. And then the Bible said, your sons and daughters will prophesy. That included the mother Mary, who was also a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, who never turned into a goddess. Come on. Yes or no, sir? Yes or no, sir? Yes or no, sir? That's how I say loud amen. Jude, the half-brother of Jesus, is not somebody that you need to pray to. Only Jesus is our only mediator. Somebody say a louder. How many of you can say a louder amen to that? And then the Bible said, they will prophesy, they will see visions, they will see dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. The ministry of prophetic began on that day because the apostles were ministering before but they were not operating under the ministry of prophetic. Yes or no, sir? What I read in the synoptic gospels, I don't hear Peter stood up and prophesied. Yes or no, sir? Yes or no, sir? Oh, that leads me to a sermon next week. The week after. Next week is, you know, we're not here. God bless you all. And then the Bible says in the 19th verse, I will show wonders in the heavens above. What does that mean? Visions. Revelation, if you think the day of Pentecost is only about speaking in tongues, you've got it all wrong. You've got it all what? He said, I will show wonders in the heavens above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to the blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we rise to our feet. Mm, thank you, Jesus. We've come to the end of the service. Hallelujah. 32nd verse of Acts chapter 2. God has raised this Jesus to life. And we are all witnesses to it. Exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father... The promised Holy Spirit. He has poured out what you now see and hear. What is the Holy Spirit does? What you now see? What you now? Yeah. Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 makes a lot of sense compared to this scripture. 
No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind has ever conceived what the Lord God has in store for those he loves. What you now see and hear. It's an experience, not an event. It's a what? Experience, not an event. For David did not ascend to heaven, yet he said, see the visions coming here. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. There you go. Both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and they said to the Peter, Brothers, what shall we do? This is exactly what happened. Listen to this. Huh? This is why Exodus makes a lot of sense. By this time, in Jerusalem, they had built a temple on Mount Moriah, right? And then there has an upper deck, like a, like a place. When these people saw the fire coming upon people, all they could remember the Torah, what they have read, what has happened in the Mount Sinai, right? They saw a mighty smoke, pillar of cloud, and a fire came and settling. They said, the Lord has come back again. This is Mount Sinai experience. The Lord said, that was Shekinah according to Hebrew Bible. But this is greater glory. Come on, somebody say aloud, amen. This is what? Greater glory. Shekinah did not happen when Solomon dedicated the temple. Shekinah happened at Mount Sinai. They said, what shall we do? Day of Pentecost is about a godly response from his people. Come on, say aloud, amen. It's about what? Godly response. Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Day of Pentecost is not about the infillment of the Holy Spirit which is a part of the Trinity. This is about the gift of the Holy Spirit, one of which is speaking in tongues. Say aloud, amen. One of which is seeing visions and dreams. Say aloud, amen. One of which is healing. Say aloud, amen. One of which is the gift of prophecy. Somebody say aloud, amen. Does that make sense? The promise is for you and your children whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. The day of Pentecost is about sanctification, which has its true meaning in the word called being set apart for God's glory. Say aloud, amen. If you receive the Holy Spirit, and if you're not leading a set-apart lifestyle, may the Lord convict you this afternoon. Somebody say aloud, Amen. Say, get away from the corrupt generation. Be set apart. And then he said, those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 were added to the number that day. There were two pools close by, both of whom the Lord already mentioned. One was Bethesda, one was Siloam. They got baptized there. Some believe Jordan, but that was not close by. And they brought in people to the church. Day of Pentecost. Still remembered as the day the church was birthed through the work of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bring us a new beginning this afternoon. Lihana Moshe when they saw on that upper room, they could connect to Mount Sinai. Bible has amazing revelations waiting for those who are willing to read it in its context. Here is my summary. This was not something new. This was already there in the Old Testament. But only to a few people. Only to a few people. Now God has given this to all those who call on the name of the Lord all those who believe he said I will pour out my spirit upon all people not some people upon what all people your sons my daughters here will prophesy come on somebody you will see visions and dreams and you will declare the glory of the Lord lift your holy hands unto heaven 
Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, pierce our hearts. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I can hear him. Come on, can you speak to God, your creator, on your own? Ruach Kadosh. Fresh fall on us a fresh show, Lord. The day of Pentecost is about your response to God today. What is going to be your response to the Lord? Give your life to Jesus Christ, even for your sons and daughters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your name, your name, your name, your name. Ah, shadows can't deny, O oh Lord. Shadows can't deny. This is not the day that I think you will receive tongues. Maybe you have already. Maybe you need to see new visions in Jesus' name. Maybe you need to receive the gift of prophetic in Jesus' mighty name. Paul said, eagerly desire for the gift of prophetic. Maybe it is the time now that you started to ask the Lord, Lord, speak to me through dreams and visions. Give me the gift of interpretation in Jesus' name. Oh, I need a new thing today, Lord. Come on, speak to God. Speak to God. When I accepted the Lord when I was in ninth standard, I was out in the Holy Spirit for three hours in KK Nagar and Trichy. Done. I did backslide after that, but that experience I still remember. I was out for three hours, speaking in tongues. Nobody could control me. Nobody could stop me. I was just on and on and on and on in my uncle's house. I'm telling you, three hours. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. It's between you and him, nothing to do with me. My job is done. It is now the Lord's job to speak to you. Speak to him now, come on. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, speak to us, O Lord God. Lehando roshe te libara hanto rubaham. Shalahanto kulahanto rubu kuliyanda rabos. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Shigala rababa babashe te libaham. 